Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today we're going to talk about hems. Yes. We'll just get it out of the way that we used to teach a class at the shop called Hemingways. Yes. <laughs> Gives all the ways you could do hems. Isn't that cute? Aren't we cute? Okay. I so, love puns. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> what's your favorite hem to do? Or My favorite? What's the hem that you wish you could tell the world about? Oh, my jeans hem. Your jeans hem. And we did an episode on that. Yeah, yeah, my it, jeans It has hem. its own episode. Yeah, it does. It, it, we dedicated a whole episode to it. But, you know, that technique took me altogether like 20 years for every step that's in there. You know, I developed it like, you know, and finally got down to actually using embroidery thread. So you're supposed to coach your witness before you put them on the stand. I thought maybe what you were going to say, because you've been talking about it, is like something about your tiny hem. My tiny Your hem? tiny oh. hem. I don't know. That's a, my favorite. It's a good one, though. It's a but really it's one, good hem. I feel like it's one you keep being like, oh, you know, we need to talk about this. Because yes. people ask about it in the group a lot. Yes. Is that a good place for us to start? Yeah, it is. Okay. I think one reason it's a good hem is, like, this would be in lieu of a rolled hem a lot of times. Okay. And it's a hem that's been used more and more in ready-to-wear and things like bridal wear. Uh, You're seeing it more. uh, I don't know how this is developed. I think probably because of fabric and just the way we wear clothes now is we don't see the deep hem anymore. Right. Okay, what we see is just a little folded over, like a shirt tail hem or a rolled hem. And you see this on bridesmaids' dresses. Right. And when I talk about a tiny hem, it's basically a shirt tail, what you right. call a shirt tail hem on a man's shirt, where it looks like it's folded over twice and top-stitched. And, you know, I have the experience of, of judging a 4-H competition one time. Yeah, I had that experience before, too. <laughs> and these these little girls, I mean, they were 12 and under. They had some, like, satin dresses on. Right. And you could see where the hem had been folded up, I don't know, like three inches and yes. top-stitched. Yeah. Oh, they top-stitched yeah. them? Oh, bad. And I think the fabric wasn't of great quality, and partially because there's not a lot of really good quality satin fabric in our town. Well, okay. that's true. And it can be expensive. Right, and These right, girls right. buying their own fabric with, like... A lot of them are like, I showed my hog to buy my fabric, to, you know, like <laughs> for this. I mean, and my they, hog loved my dress. <laughs> yeah, they 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 worked hard, but I just thought, and and a lady who was judging along with us, she just said, "Why does that hem look so bad?" And I said, "It's just not the best hem to choose right. for this." And I said, "And I don't think it's all like all that girl's okay. fault." The you other know? thing too is if you're gonna top stitch a hem. It should not be three inches up from oh, the Oh, yeah. Line. I mean, it was, yeah, it was way too I long. I mean, any time, if you top stitch a hem, it, that hem should be low and close to the hemline. So ZD's tiny hem technique is going to save you from, you know, the crinkled satiny, did you make that right. satin hem well, puckered. And it's going to save all of you who are cutting off those bridesmaids' dresses and going, I don't have this foot, or I don't have a serger, or I don't have this. You do this with just a plain sewing machine. Okay, Mom, tell me how to do it. Okay. Let's do it. So I cut I cut basically just about a half inch lower than where my hem is. Or okay. some I cut a quarter inch lower than where my hem is. Oh, we just recorded that okay. seam allowance. Yeah. Se- hem allowance and seam allowance are different. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They're very they're different. They're very different. <laughs> they're very different. There's no stress usually on a hem. Good. Okay. Good point, Mom. Yeah, think about those things. So I will cut. Approximately a quarter inch below my, where my seam needs to, or where my hem needs to be or fold, right? Yep. Okay. Then I will take this garment, and this can be a big circle skirt, a curved, a one of those, um, what do you call them, where they're short in the front? High low. High low. Everybody, yeah. um, those do not get a lot of love in our group. I know. People are offended by I them. I know. <laughs> it depends on how extreme sure. they are. Sure. Yeah. Um, Sure, or a handkerchief hem. All of this can be done this way. Any shape. Just about any shape, and it's not going to stress you out, and it will work. Okay. So, why I said a quarter inch to a half inch is I want you to feel comfortable 
with where you have to sew. So what I do then is I go to my sh machine and I, I dial in a stitch length of about 1.5. So that's usually less. Okay. Right? Than your uh, machine's default. Is this a straight stitch? It is a straight okay, stitch. Okay, okay, just okay. making sure. It is a straight okay. stitch. Straight stitch, 1.5 And I, hopefully I have a nice new needle in because I don't want any pulls or tugs. I don't want anything going out of shape. And this is going to be a high quality thread. And here I would even use machine embroidery thread. Yeah, a lighter weight thread. Could, you could use a lighter weight thread. I'm just going to interject mm -hmm. this. Less bulk. Mm -hmm. No stress on the hem. No stress, no on, stress the hem. on the hem. Okay. And for those people that have embroidery machines, a lot of times they have the more fashionable colors or a a bigger choice of colors. Yeah. Okay. You, in their embroidery thread. And could you even you use that in the bobbin as well? Oh yes. Both, or yeah. even that real lightweight embroidery bobbin thread. The embroidery bobbin that's thread. Even lighter weight. Yes. Okay. That will work too. Okay. okay. And all you do from the top. Your top stitching, basically. From the top, you are going to stitch an eighth inch away from that cut or a quarter inch away from that cut. I can do an eighth inch. My machine can do an eighth inch. And what I'm telling you is there's a difference in quality of feed dog systems in machines. So when somebody says, oh, this little cheap machine works as well as this expensive one, I'm sorry, it doesn't. You know, um, feed dog quality is a big factor in all of your sewing. So if you put a new needle in and you are still one of those people complaining about your fabric getting mm -hmm. sucked down mm -hmm. into your machine, yeah. that's why that's where you're going to use these bigger measurements mom's right. talking about. Right. The other thing is there is this very, she is, I believe, very well known. Her name is Jennifer, I think it's Rosbra, or I, I don't know how to say her last name. She's a historical garment sewer. She's got online classes and stuff. I follow her Facebook page, beautiful stuff. And she wrote, is it possible to wear out a set of feed dogs? <laughs> and know. some people were like, no. And I was like, yep, I know it is because my mom does it. I did it, and I did it on a high-quality <laughs> machine. <laughs> and I did it on a, a high-quality machine that had a you know a good um, composition of metal in the feed in dogs. In the feed dogs. Right. It, is, it is possible. Okay, well, I just wanted to interject so that. So what I'm going to say to you is <laughs> you know, the that feed dog system is... There is a difference in the quality of machine. Sure. And it's in the quality of the metal and in the quality of how it's been made or, you know. And the power cut. and the movement. All of that has all of that has something to do Sometimes with how your machine sews. Certain feed dogs make a circular motion. Yes. And certain feed dogs make more of a rectangular motion. Right. And one could see how that rectangular motion that you get in the higher end machines. Mom likes my little dance. Works here better, doesn't that I'm it? Doing. Okay. It works better, right? You get more contact with the fabric. So you're gonna choose that half inch cut and then um, quarter inch in stitching line. So hopefully line. you have, even if you're doing a bridesmaid's dress, that you got, you know, you'll have scraps. Sure. You can use this, you know, use it on part of the hem. What do you do with those scraps? What, what do, you do you mean? Do you, do you do you test with them? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. I either test or I wish I tested. That's right. There you go. One mom, or the other. Mom didn't get, she's like, I what are you? I didn't get the cue there. <laughs> so a lot of times when you get a bridesmaid's dress and you're going to hem it, you'll have enough that you can cut a little bit off and test or play with it or whatever. Yeah. And a lot of times you'll have two hems on a bridesmaid's dress because you will have a line, a full lining, you know, and uh, I, we're saying bridesmaids, but any sort of special Formal, occasion yes. wear, right? There's you, oftentimes there's two layers. Okay, we went on a, off on a couple tangents there. I just want to say you cut either a half inch away from your hemline or a quarter inch away from your hemline, mm -hmm. and then you stitched in a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch. That's right. With your 1.5 length straight stitch with lightweight thread. And if you're on some of these satins and stuff, you're using a microtex probably. And you went all the way around? Needle, yes. And you start at one point, and you just do that straight stitch all the way around. Don't stretch that baby. Do not stretch it. And don't back stitch. Don't just back stitch. When you come back around, you're going to go over those stitches again. That takes care of securing your stitch. Okay. I know there's people that think that that's a phenomenal thing to learn that. I, I don't know why. I think back stitching gets drilled into some people's heads. In kids' sewing classes. Do you know backstitching adds? Bulk. Yes, it does. Okay, what's next? Okay, so now 
and this is not difficult, I swear to you. You're going to take that hem and you're, you're laying it basically the same way with the right side up and you're going to turn it under once on that stitching line. Stitching line's like a fold line now. Just Just in one place with your hand, just where you're gonna start is where you're gonna do it. And then you're gonna turn it over again. Oh. Right? So you have the stitching line now is like towards the top of the dress mm -hmm. and the raw seam is enclosed because you've rolled it over basically. You've folded right. it twice. Put your needle in right there. You do not have to back stitch, right? Yep. And then continue that motion with your hand and go around that dress. It will fold on that little fold. Now, if this is too difficult and you're scared about folding twice, right, you can stitch twice. Okay, and this is still using the straight stitch. Right. You're still using that short stitch. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, guys, you can actually use a longer stitch here if you like. But if you have a rounded hem, you're Long, better off. Right. probably meaning only going up to like two. Well, three. Two point. I would oh, go to really? three, you maybe. Go maybe to three. I'd go to three. Test it. But you want it to look somewhat fine. Yeah. And the other thing is, and once again, you're using that finer thread. This hem really will turn for you. Yes. And you have not gone to your iron. No. Right, Do Mom? not iron. Do not iron. Do not iron a hem until you have it in. All right. Absolutely. Now. You could stitch that twice. You can turn it up once on the stitching line, top stitch it down, and turn it up again and top stitch it down, going all the way around each time if you wanted. But you are adding a little stiffness to that hem. And I, I'm telling you, if you're, this is not that hard. How many times have you done this, Mom? I feel like you're about to be like, a yes, million, I've done it a million times. A million, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean... And, I mean, I can zip one of those out in 10 minutes. The other thing is, we're talking about this. I like that you called it the bridesmaids And I do hem. this on chiffon, and I do it on that cheapy, cheapy Halloween satin. And I do it on um, the petticoats under a wedding dress, maybe. Um, what else, Where else do we well, do Well, uh, what the, I wanted the, to say was, it's not a hem for heavier fabrics. No, it's no. A, the, no, you the, have to be able to roll that little yes, bitty hem in. This, this is a hem think, for these. Think of it as a rolled hem substitute, so yeah. to speak. This is a hem for your lighter weight fabrics. Yes. And what I'm telling you is if you made that bridesmaid's dress and you think about, you're thinking about putting a two and a half inch hem in it, you're going to make it look homemade. It's going to look you real homemade. You need to use this hem. Yes. This is what's being done today. And this is what Vera Wang is doing, right. and, you know, uh, Alfred Angelo and all those people out there making wedding wear and evening wear. This is what they're doing. So that's a tiny hem. Basically, you're just straight stitching one to three times, depending on your level of comfort. And we'd say just give it a shot on your sample fabric. Right. You'll absolutely. be surprised right. at how easily it works. In fact... I think people are surprised when I tell them to surge and fold over and top stitch. And, top, and, and honestly, people think that's going to be hard. And no, it and does it just it. goes. You're folding. It wants to cup because yeah. you've stitched it already. Yep, yep. So, and then you press it. And when I say press it, you press it. You don't iron it. Don't go back and forth on that sucker. And you're going to use a pressing cloth because you don't want to burn up that cheap acetate lining. <laughs> the cheap acetate lining <laughs> now might you just steam it if that was if that did the trick and you had you know, a steamer it really, a lot of times it needs the press oh I it think. does okay i, I okay, think it looks sure. prettier um the it, chiffon i might just steam okay uh so let's take a little message break and come back and talk a little bit more about hems okay all right this episode is brought to you by the so here box for more information, go to SoHere.com slash B-O-X. So the first SoHere box was a, an absolute success, and uh, it happened right before Christmas in 2016. And we asked in the group if people would want a box of stuff curated by me and you, and they got all excited. I know. Yeah. And I, I, I started looking on the internet and looking at, like, the bark box, and it didn't correlate very well. Because I, I was like, what are we going to put in this box? I didn't want to disappoint anybody. Well, and so it's a little different than some of the other boxes That's out right. there, right? So the So Here box is not a subscription. You don't have to, like, keep paying to get it. Right. We put one out quarterly in general, and it's got a theme. And we put together a bunch of 
you know, fun things that go with the theme the that theme. have to do with sewing. And, but there's well, also... Well, they're not fun. All just uh, yeah, fun. Yeah, that's right. They're, I mean, it's it's. I guess it's fun in the sense that it's a surprise or something you haven't used before and something you probably are going to fall in love with and can't sew without. And then there's also fun branded exclusive materials. Yes. Like the infamous I am a sewing machine pin. Yes, and it, all of Mallory's pins are infamous. That's right. Highly coveted. And that pin was only available to Sew Here Box purchasers. That's right. So um, we've uh, so far put out the Sew Here Box uh, Indulge Edition. That was our first one. And then we did the Dressmaker's Delight. Which I keep calling the Dressmaker's Dream, but it was the... Maybe we can have a Dressmaker's Dream. Yeah, later. Well, you know, right. a year from now. Um, right. <laughs> and so the newest box is our Stitchin' with Knits box. So, uh, you know, if you're listening to this in the past, don't worry. You can go... Or listening to it in the future, if right. this is in the past, you can go to sewhere.com slash box and you'll be directed to the most recent Sew Here box or to sign up for our newsletter to get exclusive early announcements about when the next box is available and you can take a little piece of ZD's sewing studio home with you. Sewing out loud. Welcome back. So uh, mom informed me that she's going to talk about the exact opposite of the tiny hem. That's right. Okay tell us about it. So the exact opposite of the the tiny hem would be the deep folded up hem. Uh Uh-huh. Wait, I thought you said never to do those. I did. Okay. I said on today's wear and in today's fashion. Okay. That's what I said. Great. Right? So, if you're sewing heirloom, mm-hmm. okay, and you'll, especially like you'll see a little girl's smocked dress, mm-hmm. don't roll him the bottom. Don't just turn the bottom up. The tradition in these is that you see a deep hem, and it's usually two and a half to maybe three inches deep, even on a small child. Yeah. Okay? So you want to do a finish to your raw edge of some sort, whether it be serging or putting, you know, hem tape on it or lace. Overcast or on just, the sewing machine? Or, or just, yes, or just turning. You can do a turning tiny tiny turned hem there okay and then you want to do a blind hem stitch whether it's on your machine or by hand and that is about the deepest hem you're going to find these days this is is in an heirloom garment so in the heirloom garments you do a blind hem to uh, to get absolutely that. would you press up that hem and then blind hem At, it? no okay i wouldn't I'd pin it up, and then I would press it later. And part of what this does is a lot of times you have a lot of smocking, you have a lot of fabric in heirloom garments, and what this does is it gives it weight, like a drapery. Yeah, so remember, weight's different than bulk. Yep. Weight can be desirable. But I think you need to talk a little bit about hem theory here. Lots of people think that you have to press up your hem Mm -hmm. and then sew it. I think that that is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. Okay. The only time that I press up a hem is in a pant leg. Like your jeans hem, yeah. And I only, you know, and then sometimes, like like a man's trouser type pant. Yeah. You you might, um, especially uh, if you're doing a top stitch type hem. If I'm doing... A blind hem on my blind hemmer, which I have also. Also, that heirloom could be done on a blind hemmer. Uh-huh. Um, and that is a specific machine, everybody, a blind hemmer. Um, I do not. I do not iron it in because most hems aren't straight up. There's a different size on the bottom circumference than there is to the top because, like, most of your skirts are an A-line, something like that. So... You don't press till after you sew. Now, I I think I know why people do this because in your sewing machine owner's manual, it's like yep. blind hem. Yep. You press it up, yep. you know. So I know that you can get away without pinning a lot of the time mm-hmm. your hem. I can't always do that, like on a big. But I will pin at some landmarks, right? To you're, do that, so you can pin. So you're always pinning at your side seam, center front, center back, and maybe you're picking some spots in between. But you risk distorting your hem Absolutely. when you press it, and then some. Um, and then it doesn't come out. And and also on cover stitch hems, and I didn't know if you went. I don't think you wanted to talk about this necessarily, uh, in this episode, but. 
a lot of people say you have to press that up. On your knit, you'll really distort it. Never press it up. Don't press up your cover stitch hem. And I'm talking about a neckline, too. Yeah. And every, you know, every cover stitched garment that you see mom and I wear. It's not pressed. It's not been pressed. Unless afterwards. Maybe. If, if, if it got it at all. Yeah. yeah. So. If it needed it, it got it. That's right. Right. Now, there are times when you might, I don't know, if you're doing some weird bias something, you might. I don't know. Anyway, uh, press something sometime. But uh, keep that in mind that we don't press the hems beforehand, okay? Uh, what's another hem that you want to talk about here? Well, there is, okay, another hem is your rolled hem on your sewing machine. Okay. Okay. This is a challenge for people. It drives them crazy. Um, you have a rolled hem foot. And here's my answer to that. Practice, practice, practice. And you have to take a starting stitch and put a, a piece of thread in, in the beginning of that hem so you have something to pull through. So there's a procedure to your rolled hem. If it doesn't show you in your manual, in your owner's manual, or on a little piece of paper that came with that rolled hem foot, you will be you will be lost because yeah. you have to pull that fabric, you have to curl it through that rolled hem, and that's another foot that like it's for lightweight fabrics. Absolutely, I've seen people be like, "I'm gonna put canvas through here," and I'm like, mm, "No, you're not." That's right. You know, <laughs> that's right. I mean, there are some different size rolled hems. Roll hem feet. There are. There you are. Know, but, yeah. you know, when people say they want to do that, I'm like, it's just not appropriate. Uh, you know, I would think anything more than like a cotton, a quilting cotton, you can't almost roll. Right. I mean, you just need to think about that. It is for lightweight things. Okay. So anything else you want to talk about with hemming? Any other hem theory? Well, you know, I think when I think about hemming something, the one thing I do is I think of how am I going to finish the edge of that hem before I fold it up? Okay. Or does it need a finish? Uh huh. And most of the time, I'm doing a three thread overlock narrow, and I will space those stitches as far apart as I can. You know, still maintaining the integrity of you know that that edge. So if you do a blind hem on something, mm -hmm. you'll often three thread overlock at first. You got it at a four length maybe. That's, oh yeah. that's as long as our and, and, and well that might be too long. It, dep it really depends again test. Yeah, test it on the okay, fabric. But if I could go to four, I would. Yes. Yeah. Um, if I couldn't, I would. I'd, I'd start dialing down and see what I could do. And then you go and you do you do that blind hem or right. you know if you if you are going to top stitch up a hem, uh, if something that needs to be finished. No, now you're not. Don't say top stitch up a hem. You mean blind stitch up a hem? Well, you just said top stitch up a hem. Sometimes. Oh. What if you ever oh. do top stitch? Well, up yeah, a hem? yeah, you can I mean, top that, stitch. No, no, okay. I know. I blind okay. stitch. Or right. if you do something where it's not going to get folded over right. necessarily, right. like right. your jeans hem. That gets it's folded top stitched, over. It right. gets folded over, so we don't. Because I will, I will. That is a funny thing that I feel like I get. I used to get more people say, "I need this serger to hem my jeans." And you know, Mom and I love sergers, but yeah. we do not use a serger at all in the jeans hemming process. <laughs> you know, another thing is with a blind hemmer, um, the blind hem machine, uh -huh. right? It's it's a whole new animal, and you know. It stitches, the needle goes in sort of sideways. Right, yeah. And I do do the uh, three thread narrow over it. But you know, when I'm stitching on it, I'm not stitching on the edge of my three thread narrow. I'm actually stitching sort of on the other side of it where the fold is because you can't see that. And that's how it's done. Right, right. So it's a whole, that's a whole new animal, everybody. But I love my blind hammer. ZD is a blind hem and fool, actually. She she does really wonderful things on it. Okay, so I think that's that's some pretty good hem theory stuff. I think knit hems might be their own episode, almost. Right. Well, and all of these hems, right? You start, and when you finish, you stitch back over. You don't back stitch, right? You don't need, even if you're using that blind hem stitch on your machine, do not back up. If you have a securing stitch, you can use that, which means it goes up and down in the same in place. place. Mm -hmm. Right. The other thing is, is on your machine for a blind hem, you will have a specific foot, and your owner's manual will tell you about it. Good, good, good point there. That's 
Uh, that's pretty necessary. I don't know. If somebody's like, I blind him without my foot, then great. Good for you. <laughs> All right. Well, you can It can, can a, be done. Yeah. You can um, get a hold of us uh, via email, and you can sign up for our newsletter at sewhere.com slash love note. Get to us on Instagram or ZD Sewing Studio. And uh, where else are we? We're in the Self Sewn Wardrobe Facebook you group. You gotta believe that. All the time. Yeah, exactly. So thanks for listening. That has live podcasts. Yeah, that has live stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> or live podcasts. Live, live cast. What are they live, called? I call them broadcast. Oh, they're live broadcast. Call them whatever we want. It's like internet TV. It's <laughs> media, you know, new age at its Facebook finest. Facebook Live. Right. Okay. Well, thank you all for listening. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.